Welcome everybody to Be Well and Thrive. Today I am joined by Nick Pion of Trek CBD in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Uh, it is a wellness center that focuses on all things CBD. What they are, their goal is, is to help people experience the many therapeutic benefits of hemp-based products through education, quality, and value. And I'm sure we'll get into all of that in the future. Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being me, being on with me, and I and I can't wait for this conversation. I have uh, a bunch of questions for you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on. How, how could I say no with a title like "Be Well and Thrive"? Um, those are two things that I really believe in to the fiber of my being. So again, thanks for having me on. It's great. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So yeah, tell tell us a little bit about yourself and and what got you into uh, the world of helping people through CBD? Oh, yeah, it's a good story. Um, so I am Nick Pion. I'm the co-founder of Trek CBD. Um, my business partner is Scott Brady. Um, would have loved to have had him on the call tonight. He's a big personality and you'd all would have enjoyed him a lot. Um, but that said, so how we get involved with CBD is kind of a longer story. Um, about 20 years ago, almost now, it's hard to actually even say that out loud, but 20 years ago, <laughs> Um, I was living in Florida. Um, I was running a business at the time. It was a marketing company. Uh, I, had I, had, I had closed that business. So for any entrepreneurs out there, they're not all a home run, right? Um, but I closed that business and I got into medical sales. I was selling orthopedic soft goods. So bracing, splinting, and casting, something you know a lot about, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I love the fact that the products helped people, right? The splints helped people, the casting helped people. But in orthopedic sales, it was much more of a sell, let's say, whatsoever. I mean, I was out there on 100% commission, and I was working with orthopedic surgeons, and I just wasn't feeling fulfilled. So I was talking to a couple of friends from college that had gotten into pharmaceutical sales, and they knew my personality. They knew that I loved helping people, and they said, you've got to check this out. Um, it's a much more technical sell than you, what you're in today. Um, it's going to challenge you. Uh, you're going to get a chance to spend a lot more time with the physician than you're probably doing right now. Cause I was spending probably more time with the office manager working out terms and pricing. And I just got involved in it and I fell in love from day one. And what got me kind of what got me in love with it, um, wasn't as much the challenge, but it was the stories I would hear the stories that physicians would tell me, um, about how our medicines help somebody. And when you hear that, you know, I was, I was in the respiratory field for a long time selling respiratory medicines. When you hear somebody that could not, before they took our medicine, even walk to the mailbox to get the mail. And then they started taking our medicines and they could walk to the mailbox. They could run around after the grandkids. So I was hooked from day one on that, on what we could do to help people. Okay. And for 20 years, that's what I did. Um, I did different kind of aspects of pharmaceuticals. I did sales, I did leadership, I did marketing, I did uh, strategic operations and, and planning. Um, and then I was actually leading a large team out in California for my last position um, as a vice president for the company. But, you know, Bill, it really was that for me. What got me into, got me kind of thinking about CBD was the ability to help people. So to answer your question kind of a little bit more directly, about a year ago, um, I was leaving that career. Um, after, like I said, after, after a long while, um, I had done some interviewing with some other companies and I kind of said to myself, you know what, I want to do something different, but I want to stay in the ability to help people. So kept hearing all the stuff going on, all the buzz about CBD. And if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you've heard about it. The statistics say that it was Googled more than Kanye West in 2019 right? So CBD was a buzz, right? And myself and my business partner, Scott Brady, kind of sat down one night and he kind of pitched me on the idea. He's very influential to say, what if we don't go back and get jobs? What if we start a CBD business? And that's how it started from there because we knew and I knew that there's a lot of emerging science in this field about how CBD can help people relieve anxiety, relieve pain, relieve inflammation, help them sleep better at night, and also just balance their overall wellness. But when I looked around town and said, where am I going to buy a CBD product? It was fragmented. I mean, there was everything from a gas station to a vape shop to CBD stores that just didn't speak to myself and my business partner. They weren't very inviting. They made you feel like you were doing something wrong when you went inside. So we just decided that if we're going to do this, we're going to do something totally 
totally different at Trek CBD. Our brand is about a journey to wellness, but we want to first and foremost make a very strong, if not humbly say, an exceptional customer experience when you come into our store. So there's a lot more to the story. And of course, you know, our origin story when we kind of started this whole business plan started over a beer. So as you can imagine, it was a pretty interesting conversation, but I'll kind of kick it back over to you right now. Um, and that's kind of how we all started doing this. That's great. That's a, that's a pretty neat way to uh, get it started. Hey, let's, let's start a CBD. What, what, what about CBD besides, um, besides the fact that it's a hot topic, you know, obviously that's a great thing to get into business for, but what about CBD and how it helps people really sold you or convinced you that, Hey, this is what we really need to do. And I mean, like you said, you went from going into doctor's offices and, and selling a drug that can help people, like you said, walk to their mailbox. Um, and that's helping someone for sure. So why switch from kind of um, that pharmaceutical you know, uh, yep. medicinal to more of the, the CBD route. Yeah. So I think first and foremost, if you're going to start any business, right, as an entrepreneur, you got to make sure it is a market opportunity. So that's when we spoke to the fact that it's hot, the market's growing and whatnot. But you brought up a really important point And the fact that I think we all draw from personal experiences. Um, and when my brother, my older brother had ended up with just sudden onset bilateral knee pain, it was seronegative for rheumatoid arthritis, but they just couldn't figure out what was going on for him. And they were giving him oral steroids and it was really, you know, starting to have an effect on him. And he started to use CBD, topicals, tinctures, and he immediately started to feel better. So I think you draw from that personal experience. I know if my business partner here, Scott, was here, um, he would talk about his mom who's been battling um, a rare form of leukemia for years, and she's been using CBD for a number of years, along with a, no a lot of other natural remedies as well, too. So I think, number one, you kind of say, okay, it's kind of probably a threefold thing here. Number one, it's the market opportunity. Number two, and when I say the market opportunity, it's not just that we want to open up a CBD business, it's that we didn't see a category, as you kick the podcast off, that spoke to education, quality, and value, right? So we didn't see that locally, okay? Second thing was, personal experiences. When I hear that, when I hear my older brother say, this is really helping me, you know, of course, I'm going to sit up and listen. The third thing was, you know, I spent 20 years following the science um, and, you know, come from a very regulated industry. And when you look at the emerging body of science for CBD, um, it's something that's not going to be a flash in the pan or something that's going to happen overnight. I mean, if you look at the whole body of evidence, um, two years ago, there was the first approved pharmaceutical in the category um, uh, for seizures disorders. Um, there is a growing body of evidence, number, what's already been proven and what's going to go into research in terms of what it can do for those things that we talked about before, the pain, the inflammation, the anxiety, the insomnia, and much more, okay? But it's also the belief, right? The belief is that, you know, I saw myself go on this journey that over the past kind of, I don't know, decade or so, I watched the world change around me where, you know what, more so than ever, people are looking for more natural alternatives. People are looking for, you know, more organic solutions. There's nothing wrong with pharmaceuticals, but if you can maybe avoid a medicine and be using something more naturally, people are looking for that option in their lives. And like I said, we just needed to put together a concept that could be founded on something that was different, but that could meet the consumer where they are. It doesn't matter where they are, whether they've been using pharmaceuticals their whole life and they're looking for something natural now, or, they've been using natural products their whole life and they're just looking for something different and they want to try CBD. That's what kind of spoke to us and that's what spoke to me. And that's what made me say, you know what? I could easily go back into pharma and keep doing what I'm doing, but that's going to be the same. I want to do something different with the rest of my career and I want to help people on a more natural level. Wonderful. Do you, there's also got to be less side effects too, right? In comparison to obviously yeah. some of the other pain, pain modifying. Um, yeah you know, medications out there, we have an opioid ep uh, epidemic right now. And, and, you know, I know that's something that I'm trying to help with my treatment of people trying to help them out of pain without using the, the pain medications or injections. And, um, you know, CBD, like you said, is a, is a, is a great natural um, resource for that. Um, do you feel like, do you feel like, do you see any, I'm just curious, you said natural a bunch of times, do you see any products out there that are becoming mm, less natural or less um, of the, the natural CBD and more of maybe something that's manufactured? You know, I don't think we've been there yet. 
um, cause the category is still emerging, right? But I think you mentioned one of the biggest things I think that, that, that I think about a lot, um, side effects, right? When you think about taking a medicine, a side effect could be anything from GI upset or probably the most common side effect for any pharmaceutical is headache, right? So I don't know what it is, but that seems to be the most one. GI upset and headache are probably the most common amongst pharmaceuticals. But the other side effect, and I don't know if you want to call it a side effect, but is we all experience with the opioids is that too much of one thing can be a really bad thing, yeah. right? So when you think about that, what you said about that, man, opioids were, are great at relieving pain. And certainly I don't believe that their intention was to get people addicted that when they created those medicines, but that unfortunately did happen to a lot of people and it did destroy a lot of lives in the process around that. So I think the opioid epidemic was just another reason that kind of fueled us to say, we have a product CBD where there is a, a strong emerging body of evidence. I just read another paper today where people are getting off opioid dependence through CBD because it does work with a lot of the same receptors in your body um, in getting off that path. Um, that's huge. I mean, that's huge. So that again, huge. it's a lot of unintended consequences here, but that certainly wasn't a, an intended consequence, but it certainly happened um, with the opioid epidemic. Um, and again, another reason why you know, it's not my intent and it never will be my intent to say you should never be taking a pharmaceutical. But if there is another alternative open to you, I would strongly advise you to consider it. You know what I mean? To do that, to look at that. Yeah. Everything has a, everything has a, has a, has a risk to it. Right. So I don't think what to answer your question, I don't think we've seen a manufactured product come out yet. The first manufactured kind of quote unquote was the approved pharmaceutical um, Epidiolex uh, for CBD. Um, if that's the closest thing you can really get to manufacture, but that's probably the first, but right now, what is, what is needed and what's happening right now in the category is making sure that standards are being brought into place by the FDA to make sure there's consistency in the manufacturing process. So what we do at Trek CBD, um, is a little different. Everything in our store is backed by a third party laboratory analysis, a certificate of analysis, meaning you can look it up for any of our products. And what it'll show you is every product is free of molds, pesticides, mycotocins, anything, right? And if it says it has an X amount of milligrams on the label, it has an X amount of milligrams on the label. Because the unfortunate reality is right now is that it's an unregulated industry. Um, so anybody can put a label on a bottle that's not going to be regulated. And that's why right. a COA is so critically important. And that's why we took about nine months vetting every single manufacturer in our store to make sure that they were the ones that were providing the utmost quality in their products. Yeah. You have to make sure it's legit. You can't, yep. you can't have a bad product. And, and based on what everything you're saying, you know, especially with value and quality, um, you yep. can't, you can't cut corners with that. Uh, before we, you know, before we go too far uh, forward, I think it's important to ask you what you, what, what is CBD for our listeners and what is, like, what do you know about it? What do you know about its effects on the body and its health, health benefits? Um, yeah. For example, if someone were to walk into your, to your store today and, and say, hey, I'm new to this, uh, I'm interested in doing it for you know, knee pain, anxiety, sleep, whatever it is. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about it? I'd love to. Yeah. So um, what is CBD? CBD is one of the 113 different cannabinoids or compounds found in the hemp plant. Okay. So everything in our store comes from a hundred percent organically sustained and harvested hemp. Okay, so let's take a step back for a second here. So what is hemp, right? It's not just the rope that Thank you might've heard of with clothing or whatnot. Hemp is in the cannabis family. So if you think about the cannabis family, right? The cannabis family has marijuana and it has hemp, okay? They are whatever you wanna call them, sisters, brothers, whatever. Marijuana, the one that people are probably more familiar with, has a very high THC content. So therefore it can get you extremely high and you can have side effects like paranoia and whatnot. But hemp has a very low amount of THC, so nothing in our store is psychoactive whatsoever, meaning it can't get you high, and it has a very high CBD content. Now, to just to spell any myths right now, it's federally legal in every single state in the US, okay? Hemp is right, right now. Marijuana is not, as we all know, okay? But, but CBD is probably the most abundant cannabinoid found in the hemp plant. 
Um, there are a ton of also rare cannabinoids that they're doing research on right now, including CBC and CBG and CBN, because as they're doing more research, they're finding out more about this miraculous plant. Hemp is a very good plant for the environment. It sucks up everything around it. It's what's known as a bioaccumulator. So it'll suck up heavy metals, it'll suck up pesticides. They actually planted it outside of Chernobyl to help clean up the environment. But hmm. in the end, you're right, every good has a bad, so you gotta make sure you know where your hemp is coming from. Because if they plant it in a field that was heavily fertilized over the years, it's gonna suck up everything that came oh, wow. out of that soil. So again, that's why the COA is vitally important. But hemp has a lot of medicinal qualities, things we've talked about. So let's talk a little bit about if you were to come into our store, right? We know that outside the four walls of our store, people are very curious. It's a buzzword right now. They're curious. About 25% of the population has tried CBD. But the other majority, as curious as they are about this, and they maybe have heard about it from a friend or a neighbor or whatnot or a coworker, they're also confused. They're confused about a couple of things. Number one, I just mentioned a couple of them. Is it legal? Is it marijuana? No and no, right? Yes and sorry, yes and no, it is legal. No, it is not marijuana, right? Um, and when they come into our store, that's where we start. We start with education. Well, let me back up there. I, I'm actually wrong, actually. We start with a good get to know you. We like to know our customers. We will meet you at the door. Before coronavirus, we would shake your hand, of course. Now it's kind of a little thing here or whatever. But we want to get to know you as a person, right? Why are you here? Um, nine times out of ten, it's one of those three things, pain, inflammation, anxiety, or sleep. Um, uh, but once we get to know why they're here, we start off at our front table with going through how CBD works with your body. It works with what's called your endocannabinoid system. And this system's only function is to keep you in balance. So there's receptors located throughout your body, CB1 and CB2 receptors. And CBD is a cannabinoid that comes in from the outside. You're introducing it to your body to help regulate this system. Now, your body produces cannabinoids on its own, okay? And you have an endocannabinoid system, whether you're taking CBD or not. So you have this system in your body already. Its whole job, like I said, is to maintain balance. So we're going to start there with helping you kind of understand a little bit about CBD, what it is, what it isn't. And then you mentioned it before, but if it was knee pain, we might ask you to roll up your pant if you were willing to, and we might rub on some pain cream to that, or you might rub it on more specifically. Um, and nine times out of 10, when we're done with our education and all our talk, you're probably feeling better. You're starting to feel that CBD penetrate into the muscle, into the joint, um, one of our top selling products has menthol and capsaicin in it. It warms the area and it helps, helps the CBD penetrate. But that's what we do. We let you try the oil, which is the most popular way to treat pain or inflammation from the inside out. So it really starts there. We believe in education. If it's a longer conversation, we might take you to the back of our store where there's a couch and chairs and a TV and sit you down. And we'll have a more ongoing lengthy discussion. But that's where it starts. And then you'll experience something that's really different. Everything in our store is open to touch. You can pick it up and touch it. And also you'll notice that from a value perspective that you know what, our prices are below manufacturer and pricing because we really want to open up access to wellness, not close. It. So I usually ask what makes you different or why someone should choose you. And it sounds like you just really answered it. I mean, the education, the, 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 the willingness to get to know your customer alone compared to just going to a grocery store or, or even, as you mentioned, some of the other stores in the area that you feel like you might be in the wrong place. You may feel like you're in a head shop, uh, head shop or something. Um, so, yeah, I love hearing that. I love hearing that you're, you're trying to get to know these people so that you can best help them. Uh, what do you feel like? within the anxiety, the sleep, the, the pain, w with your conversations, what are the things that people are looking for most to get out of yeah. uh, from the CBD? Yeah, I have an answer from a broad stroke. And I talked about this the other day, but um, I think if it's the broad stroke for all three of those things, it's quality of life. Um, quality of life is something that, you know, you can't put a number on it, right? I mean, if you're getting older and you've got joint pain from arthritis, so that's an inflammatory cascade, right, as we all know, going on throughout your body. So you might need to take an oil, something like this. This is our product called Triplicity. 
It combines CBD with two rare cannabinoids, CBC and CBG. A lot of research going on right now that has potential to reduce pain and inflammation even more so than CBD. So that's why we combine the three cannabinoids in here. You would take this under your tongue and you would hold it there for about 45 seconds. You want to do that because it's sublingually absorbed into your bloodstream. And that's going to help that endocannabinoid system we talked about fight the inflammation from the inside out. But then you might also need a topical pain reliever from the outside in to just get you moving. They warm you up in the morning and get you moving um, around there. So when you think about that quality of life statement, if you can't chase your grandkids right now, if you're, you know, if you can't move the way you want to, I mean, you can't go to the gym and exercise like you'd like to ride a bike, run, you know, you can't put a number on that. So people are looking for that. Um, you know, the anxiety thing. Um, you know, people that are looking to achieve a better sense of calm, we all know from time to time how bad it is when something's going on in your life that's giving you stress and how that can not only affect you, but it can affect your family as well because you're not the same person that you are normally. But just think about that when it's not just on a situational basis, when anxiety becomes a daily thing. Um, and we have customers tell us every single day that when they combine, like say, an oil with an edible product to give themselves more broader coverage throughout the day that they report that they're a different person. They feel calm now that they've never felt before and it changes their life. And then we know that can spiral into the fact that if you're stressed out, you're not sleeping at night. And you're a parent, Bill, I know you, I know you know this probably better than most right now. There is, I learned this with my three kids. I'm blessed with a 16 year old, um, actually soon to be 17, a 14 and a seven year old. And I can only say that in those early days when you bring your child home from the hospital and you're so excited to look in that little one's eyes and you're elated, going a couple nights without sleep, I know it's a badge of courage or a badge of honor, but man, there is no more effective form of torture out there than going without no. sleep. <laughs> and for people that come into our store and say, I just can't sleep. My mind won't shut down. I've got a lot going on. That was me, actually. That's my story with CBD. Yeah. Um, it just changes your life. I mean, it changed my life. I spent, I spent years having a big job with a lot of responsibility. And on the good nights, I would get to sleep, you know, after an hour or so. On the bad nights, I would get to sleep and then wake up because something would wake me up. And then my mind would say, it's go time. Let's keep going. So CBD has changed my life. I'm able to get to sleep and stay asleep. Um, and like I said, I, I don't know if you can put a, a number on that in terms of what that all those things I just talked about mean from a quality of life perspective. You really can't. It, it's, it's, yeah, it, there's no, there's no money amount that yeah. you can put to it for sure. When it comes to helping people with, you know, getting that quality of life or, or getting the ability to move a little bit better yeah. or feel more calm uh what how do you handle it when it comes to someone who may need to really speak with someone or see someone for a given issue whether it's knee pain going to see a yep. physical therapist a chiropractor a, a physician um going to or going to see a psychologist if they're having anxiety or sleep disorders how do you usually handle that Yep. Great, great question. Um, so first of all, we like to, to, to say that with CBD, it's about time in milligrams, meaning you got it like anything, whether it's a pharmaceutical or CBD, you got to take it consistently if you have a consistent problem. Meaning if you're just having situational anxiety, then you can take it every once in a while, right? But if you're having daily anxiety or daily pain, you need to take it every single day. And then that, so that's the, that's the time piece, right? And then after about four weeks, you would need to kind of evaluate if you're on the right milligram or not. We always start people low and slow. You start off at a low dose and then you're consistent with it for about four weeks. But then it's not something that we can say, if you weigh this much, you need to take this much. You need to come back and tell us, I think I'm doing much better, but I want to see if I can do even better. Then we time to go up in milligrams. But it's the customers to your question that we get to know even better that seem to still be struggling that we'll say, hey, have you ever considered going to see a chiropractor um, and Dr. Morgan Lentz with, um, with, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Raleigh yeah. Chiropractic um, is amazing and we've partnered up with her. Or if it's a psychologist, I mean, Dr. Amanda Seavey, right, with Raleigh Psychwell, we, we partner up. And then of course now you and I know each other, we're gonna partner up as well because 
it's more about who we are. It's not just about what's right for the person, but we believe in creating partnerships through synergies. So we believe that we are part of a community. We're just only one piece of that community. So as we get to know our, our, our customers more, then we want to basically help them on any level that we can, whether it's, you know, whether it's what we just talked about now, or we've had, you know, plenty of our, of our customers come in and say, Hey, I'm starting a new business. Would you mind putting our business cards out? And we say, absolutely. Of course we've had customers come in and say, Hey, you know what? I'm looking for a job. Can you help me? And you know, my very fortunately myself and Scott have big business networks from our previous roles. So we'll connect them with people on our networks on LinkedIn. It's just who we are. We believe in community and the overall wellness of the community. So that referral list is ongoing. Um, and like I said, well outside of just overall wellness itself Does that help yeah. yeah absolutely i got two two follow-up questions for that yeah. how would you just how would you define wellness we've spoken about it a couple times it's part of your mission statement uh i believe just spreading wellness and your wellness center um how how would you define wellness yeah so I think it's two things, right? It's not only how I would define it, but more importantly is how our, our guests would define it as well too. Because I think about it as number one, we can define it in our little box right now in terms of helping people live their best life um, when they come in. And that's why it was so important to us and, and especially to me to not leave a career that focused on helping people get better. Right. I could have gone in and sold. I could have gone with a 20 year history in sales and left pharmaceuticals and gone to another industry. Right. But I wanted to stay in an industry that focused on wellness, but I wanted to be on the natural side of things. There's no doubt about that. So for me, I can define it within our box as saying, you know what, it's important to us to have the utmost the best manufacturers that we do business with because every single one of our manufacturers is from soil to oil. They grow the hemp, they sustain the hemp, they put it in the bottle basically. So we have the utmost quality. We can make sure that we're doing it at a reasonable base price because I spent 20 years fighting the price game in pharmaceuticals. It's very controversial and I didn't want to go back there again. I didn't want to close off access. As I mentioned before, I want to open up access to wellness. Um, and we also wanted to be in something where we really felt at the end of the day, people needed us. So that's how I would define wellness on my end. But like I said, it's really not about me. Um, it's about the guest that's in front of us. So that's why we just think it's critical when you come into our store that we just kick a stool out for you, sit you down at one of our tables, get to know you as a person, get to know what your needs are, and then we can show you solutions and talk to you about what your goals are for wellness. But I'd rather have you define it then have me kind of say, you know, what it is, but that's how it is. And then what I'm kind of telling you today, a lot comes from what I've been fortunate enough and Scott's been fortunate enough to learn from our guests over the past six months. Um, and yeah. that shaped how we do business it really has it's changed since day one. What are some of the questions that you ask people to try and get them to open up and, and help you better understand what they're looking for? Oh, I, I, I'm taking away that that helps you help them find what's best for them in terms of the product that they need. What types of questions do you ask them and what do you feel like has been the, the most successful? Yeah, I first and foremost feel like it's a journey. And let me tell you why I think it's a journey. Um, I learned a long time ago in sales that any relationship is based on trust. Um, and it's no, that's no shocker right there. People are going to say, yeah, no kidding. Nick, it took you a long time to learn about that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to say, okay, I'm a slow learner. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, um, it's built on trust and I don't think it's something that you can fake. I think it has to be authentic and it has to come from the heart. So like I said, you walk into just don't even think about CBD, right? But just think about how many stores you walk into where you roam the store before anybody even eyeballs you, gets up, talks to you, whatever, right? Happens a lot, unfortunately, right? Too many times. Um, um, it's too many times, right? So we, like I said, we make a, you know, we got a, our store is about 60 feet long. We got two beautiful glass windows up in front. When we see you coming out of the parking lot and we see you walking towards our door, we don't wait to meet you from behind the transaction counter. We come out from behind the transaction counter, meet you at the door, of course, with a mask on, right? Um, open the door for you. Um, and then, you know, automatically greet you, tell you, Hey, this, I'm Nick. You know, I'm one of the co-founders of Trek CBD, get to know their name, right? Get to know, ask them a simple question. Why are you here? Um, you know, that sounds simple, but 
How many times have you gone into a store where it's so clear that they want to sell you what they want to sell you instead of what you need? It's kind of right. like going into an electronics store and you need a laptop and they're trying to sell you a TV, right? right. Uh, because they got a TV promotion going on. So I think it's just that. It's that genuineness that people get it, that we care about people and they can see it in us. And then by the fact that our actions equal our body language, meaning we take the time to get to know them, we sit them down, meaning when you're in our store, our focus is on you. We don't, we don't brush you off. We're going to take as long as it needs, right? We're going to sit you down for an hour. Like I talked about that seating area. We've sat patients down there for an hour and talked to them. It just, it, so it comes from that basically. I think, I, I think I would call it good old fashioned customer service. Um, and there are plenty of companies that do it well. We're, we're not the only ones, but we know that if we're going to survive in this world where more business is going online these days, um, and where people can just, you know, call your Amazons or your Walmart.coms. The, the stores that survive are about creating an experience. And our experience is the customer. That's the experience. You are our experience. So we're going to do everything we can to make that experience exceptional. But we also know that without you, we're not in business. So I don't know if I've answered your question exactly the way you, you envisioned it, but it's the authenticness of they know that we care about them that allows them to build that trust in open up and why I said it was a journey is that sometimes it's not on the first time they 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 come in and see us but on the by the time of the second and third and they see the same thing over and over again then it just we keep getting more information and it opens up more and more over time That's incredible I bet uh, there are probably quite a few people that are taken aback by that that way that you come and greet them and are actually interested in what they have to say I feel yeah. like you said too many times people just stand behind a counter or um, as you said, they sell you what they think you may need. Uh, but to, to really listen, sit down and figure out what, what is going on with a person is, is so important. So that's, that's so great to hear. And, you know, I have, I have the most confidence sending people to you. Well, I sincerely mean it. And I, and I mean it to any of your listeners who are listening and if they have a small business and if they ever want to sit down and talk about the customer experience, Go to trekcbd.com, T-R-E-K-C-B-D.com. Just hit contact us. I'll be happy to talk with you. You know, or my business partner, Scott. Or in, 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 and forget about the other side of this. If you actually have questions about CBD, you can go to the same place, right? But that's not the intention there, right? The intention is that if you're thinking about, wow, you know, how did you guys land on this customer experience? It wasn't by accident. There was a lot of planning and intentionality that went behind this. But again, our intention is to build community and to help. So happy to help any of the entrepreneurs that are listening right now um, and just have a good conversation. Okay. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. What, uh, what are you guys doing besides what you're doing in the store to promote wellness within the community? Are you guys doing anything? I mean, obviously right now it's a little bit challenging with, with COVID and some of the restrictions, but do you have any thoughts or plans or grand dreams to promote a community wellness at all? We do. You know what we do? We're, we're extremely proud of our store. Um, you can see the gallery pictures at our, on our website. Um, uh, my wife, Katie, and my business partner's wife, Shannon, put the store together. So it looks beautiful. Um, it's based around that, that education piece and around, you can see the quality of it's there, right? So yeah, we have a lot of big plans. Um, and our, our big plans was number one, before COVID hit. And you know, Everyone's using the term, you got to pivot, you got to pivot, you got to pivot, right, in COVID. Well, our plans was to really start aligning ourselves with the medical community, starting with chiropractors, because we believe in chiropractors in terms of they believe in alternative and natural medicine. So we really wanted to partner with them. PTs as well, we want to do the same thing. Um, and that's not stopped. Um, it's just slowed down a little bit with COVID, so we're not stopping that at all. We also believe in community. So um, we've gotten involved with the Chamber of Commerce through Business Networking International. It's called BNI. It's a networking group. So we can become a more productive member of the community itself. Um, but the biggest thing is, is that we have a, that beautiful store we talked about. We really envision doing some get to know the expert nights where we would have somebody like you or somebody like um, Dr. Morgan Lentz come in and speak about pain, not about CBD, but something that can bring value to our community. Speak about pain and do it in our store and in our audience there. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of grand plans for that. Um, as well as, you know, we've become a, 
an online store, an e-commerce store as well too, because we have some big networks and our intentionality was not to start an online store, um, but just serving those that know us, we've, we've been able to, to, uh, to pro pro provide for them um, over the web. So yeah, so it's, we have a lot of big plans. Yeah, we're not done yet, um, but you know, we're, certainly gonna, we're certainly gonna be flexible right now. No, that's great. That's, you know, it's the plan to try and make sure that you continue to educate people through, you know, guest speakers is, is great. It's, it's, I feel the, when people aren't sure about something or they uh, don't know enough about something, they, they don't get the help that they need. Right. So if you can have someone come in and talk to them about, you know, how, whether it's chiropractic, psychology, physical therapy, nutrition, mm -hmm however however that can help someone they may say oh i have that problem maybe yeah. i should get some maybe i should get some help for it uh so yeah it's it's interesting uh what would you say what would you say the biggest objection you have for people with when they whether they hear about cbd or whether they're in the store and you're suggesting something yeah it's a good question um you know we don't tend to get a lot of objections because um, we really tend to get a lot of people that are really looking and are really curious about it, right? Um, they tend to come in the store with a relatively open mind. We've had some skeptics come in and after a good, sometimes it's an hour conversation, we've been able to kind of turn the conversation around. Um, but the objections really is not, it's really just finding what is going to be best for them, meaning the route of administration. Um, so we might recommend to them in oil, right? This is the oil, like we said, why would you want to take an oil versus something else, right? Because the oil, like we talked about, goes right into their bloodstream um, and it goes um, it goes very rapidly. So it's absorbed, it bypasses digestion, so it doesn't get taken away by digestion or the liver. But some people might, after trying it, say, you know what, I just don't want to put an oil in my mouth twice a day. Like, okay, so it's not an objection, but then we have to go to a capsule and say, okay, here you're gonna take a capsule, which is Everybody knows what a capsule does, right? You're going to swallow that. It is going to take longer because it does have to go through digestion, right? And it does have to kind of go through that and then be metabolized and whatnot. But, but hey, it's, it's, an, it's an equally as effective form, right? Not doing anything is, is, the, is, the, is probably the worst thing you can do, right? But yeah. getting you on the right route of administration is the most important thing. So it's not really an objection per se. It's more about um, you know, finding the right product for the right situation and making sure people understand that, you know what, a gummy, as tasty as they are, an edible product, right, is fantastic if you have situational anxiety or if you're taking something like this twice a day, which will last you about 12 hours, but to bridge the gap in the kind of the middle of the day, if you're at work, you just want to kind of chew on something to reduce your anxiety, great option. But if you're telling me you have rheumatoid arthritis and you're in severe pain, probably not the best thing for you, right? You need something a little bit yeah. more potent. But again, yeah. that's not an objection. That's just where we kind of educate people and tell them a little bit more about why an oil is more important than the tasty gummy at the point, right? Yeah. Um, so it's more that. It's more that than anything else. I think it's it, it's that in itself. But again, I think that you know the people that, that we're fortunate to, to help are in a place where they're really looking for something to help them. Yeah. What do you think people are most skeptical about? The legality of it. Um, oh. You know, I think I think it's when you have somebody come into the door, and it's kind of funny. We have a we have, we get we get to have a little bit of fun with this because our store that sits at 1968 South Main Street in Wake Forest is actually in the same plaza as the Wake Forest Police Substation. So when people <laughs> come in and say, "Man, I didn't know this stuff was legal in this state," or "Man, are you sure you guys are okay to be doing this?" We're like. It's okay. Look at the sign, the marquee out front. You know, the Wake Forest Police Department's here. We take the trash out every night. And they're in the back. You know, we kind of <laughs> say, tell them how much we appreciate them. You know, that kind of stuff. But it's probably that. Um, the fact is, or any of the other things that they just because they've heard so much about it, or you can get CBD in so many different places. Tell me why this is safe. And then we go. That's just the education piece right there. Telling about that, and then also having a frank and honest conversation about. Tell me what it can actually do. You know, and then we have an equally as honest conversation about that. So that's what people are skeptical about. People are curious about it, but they just want to know more about it. They just, they, you know, it's one thing to hear anecdotally. And this is how I started hearing a lot about CBD. I remember talking to my financial planner and he's like, yeah, you know, my dog takes that stuff. I'm like, oh, good. I'm like, you've ever considered it for yourself. Um, but you hear it from somebody at a party. But again, it's one thing about if you hear about how well it works from a friend. And that's important. It was important for me on how well it worked for my brother. But then, 
I don't know if I'm going to take everything I read on the internet as 100% gospel, even though my 14-year-old son would tell you that everything on the internet is 100% gospel, right? And then being able to find a place where you can get your questions answered. And again, that's one of the reasons why we founded Trek CBD is because there wasn't a place that we felt spoke to us that could do yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's so important. What do you say to people who are concerned about the THC that is in CBD and, you know, if they have a job that does do drug testing? Yeah, I would say, number one, it's a great question. And it's a question that we uncover when we when we get into the store. And the 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 um, the probability if you're taking a, an oil that has 0.3 percent THC or less of coming up on a drug screen is low. But that's not to be tried to be taken. Um, easily. So if you have a if you have an employer that does or a job that's dependent upon drug screening, we have plenty of products that have zero THC in them. Why we sell products with THC in them, and again, not because they have any psychoactive effect whatsoever. You can't get high from these products. Why we do is because THC actually helps the other cannabinoids work better in harmony or synergistically. It's called the entourage effect. You can look that up, entourage. Um, and it's where all the compounds, all the cannabinoids that help plant, hemp plant work better together. But again, if you're in law enforcement, if you're, an air, if you're in the airline industry and you simply can't take the chance, we'll be the last person to stand in front of you and your job. And we will be happy to provide you a product that has a lab tested COA of 0% THC. Okay. So that's so skepticism is great, but it's not a reason not to try CBD because we have a product for you. That's great. I'm glad that you were able to kind of dispel that. Yep. What uh, What are some of your favorite things? Let's say top three favorite things about working with your clients or helping them. Man, the top three favorite things is what drove me for 20 years in my previous career is absolutely addictive here. It's the stories. It's the person that came in and you find out about them and, and kind of what their problems are and what they, how we could potentially help them. And then it's the fast forward 30 days later and you, they come back and they say, wow, I feel calm. Um, I, my wife tells me, this is a funny story actually. So I had an awesome uh, woman come into the store about 90 days ago. Cause I think she's been back with us twice since then after the first 30 days. And I know her pretty well. She came back in and I said, how's it going? And she said, well, you know, I think, I think I feel better. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me more. Um, I think I feel better, but my husband tells me I'm a completely different person. Now, we all know when we have a spouse, they're the ones that are going to give us the unvarnished truth, right? Yeah. So your coworkers might shine you on or your friends might shine you on, right? But that, to me, was an ultimate testimonial. And like I said, she's been back twice since then. We've played around with some dosing and some different products. But the fact that her family has felt the difference to me is addictive in terms of, you know, you've made a difference in someone's life. Right. Um, right. So that's, I mean, it, it, I don't know if it's a top three for me, but, and then it's the, it's the, it's the fact that, that we're fortunate to serve a great community and we're going to expand that community because we're looking for an additional store right now and have plans for many more, but the ability just to be able to, get involved in the community, to understand that community. This is a community that I knew pretty well because I'd lived here for eight years. But to truly become a member of that community now on a business level is something I love. So I live here. I own a business here. Um, about to start employing people here. So that's what I love the most about what we do. That's great. That's so important too. What do you, uh, what would you change about the world of whether it's CBD or even, you know, medicine or pharmaceuticals? Um, I would say um, I would balance the world of pharmaceuticals. I'll start there first with your last point of pharmaceuticals and, um, and, uh, and natural wellness, let's just call it that, because it's not just CBD, right? Um, meaning if you can get away without even using a, a, an over-the-counter pain reliever, right, or a high dose, like an 800 milligram Motrin or any of the COX-2 inhibitors or anything that's not opioid-based, right, if there's a way that you could do it naturally, why not, right? So it's a balance, right? The world I came from, unfortunately, we saw patients that had asthma in COPD. And a lot of our business was on the COPD side, chronic, a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is where people have usually half of their lung function or less 
So if you are looking to breathe better, I'm sorry, but there wasn't a natural solution there. You needed a pharmaceutical. And that's the patients that told us they felt better when breathing and the quality of life was there. So again, I would never say there's not a need for pharmaceuticals. You need that. Right. Like I said, Absolutely. on the other side of things, if you could maybe, maybe, this is a maybe, but if you could relieve your anxiety with something more natural, why not? Drugs, as you mentioned before, have pharmaceuticals rather have side effects. And those side effects are not always pleasant, right, behind there. So the other part is, so if I think about that, that's one piece of it, right? So there's a balance between pharmaceuticals and natural wellness. Um, the other part is, what would I like to change behind this? I'd like to see some more regulation in this category. Um, there's far too many people making unsubstantiated claims that should not be making unsubstantiated claims. I would mm -hmm. love to see consistency in manufacturing because although we mandate a certificate of analysis, a lot of people don't. And that hemp mm -hmm. could be coming from China, from Europe or whatnot, where it could not be the quality. Um, I, I'd like to see some of the concepts that are out there basically um, focus more on what's in the bottle than the label on the outside. Meaning even if it's good quality, you can buy your own product from somewhere else, slap your label on it and you know, make a lot of money with that. We decided not to do that. Um, right. We decided to work with the top manufacturers. And then when we developed this product under our label, we worked with the top manufacturers because one specific reason. This product called Triplicity, there was nothing like it on the market. There wasn't a product that combined these three rare cannabinoids. So we said, we believe this is where the future of CBD is going. We're not going to wait for the manufacturers that we're working with to develop this. We're going to develop it on our own. And we do it at, a, at an extreme discount. This product is priced far below anything else you could find out there on the market with the amount of rare cannabinoids that are in it. But again, it's who we are, quality, education, and value. So those are things I'd like to see change a little bit differently in this industry, um, as well as I'd like to see change, if I'm being completely honest, I'd like to see more people come into our store because mm -hmm. I know we could help. I know we could help. I really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're curious, great. Okay, you come into our store, you're not under an obligation to buy. You want to contact us on our website, contact us. We'll consult with you. You're not under an obligation to buy. Okay. If you do buy, everything is backed by a hundred percent money back guarantee. So you get no risk involved in it. Thank you for that insight. That was great. Uh, really nice to hear about what you're saying. You know, it's, I think it's important to, as you said, kind of gain a little bit more balance. Let's try and do something a little bit more natural, but then when things yeah. need need pharmaceuticals like that you know i talk about it with insurance a lot there are a lot of things that when it comes to insurance insurance isn't very good at covering and then yeah. but then there are things that you're damn thankful that you have insurance for um you know just looking at cars like you, you get a flat tire your insurance doesn't cover it uh right. you get a, a small ding in your car you're not going to go through your insurance to cover it but if you get in a major accident, God forbid, you're pretty happy that you have the insurance to cover the, the damages. Um, so definitely when it comes to pharmaceuticals, you know, when it's something that's life threatening, life altering, yeah. you know, it's so important to have some of those things. And I'm really happy that you said that because sometimes people get so caught up in the natural, the natural, the natural, the natural, you know, it's got to be natural that and they think pharmaceuticals is evil. Uh, that it that it you know it kind of it's really nice to hear the opposite side of it thank you yeah what uh what do you feel like um people hmm, what would you say your biggest limitation is in helping people there's a couple of limitations honestly that, that are on us right now from a constraint perspective so like i said we, we flat out want to reach more people because we know we can help right um you know we, we understand that you know you've got you've got a aging population out there uh baby boomers and whatnot you've got people that are living more active lives than they ever had before in their life i mean i know more friends that are doing their first marathon running their first uh, triathlon and they're in their 40s. It's not young people, yeah. right? So people want to live a more fuller life. So therefore, you know what, you need something that can just help you enhance your exercise performance, right? And we help, we help guests do that as well, too. So but quite honestly, it's, this is not an easy business. So if anyone's listening out there, I don't want to make it sound like it's all puppy dogs and rainbows, right? It's not. Um, 
you know, when you try to advertise on social media, for some reason, Facebook and Instagram treat you like you are a marijuana based business. We're not, it's a hundred percent federally legal, but they want to restrict you getting the word out there. And I, I'm not even talking about, they should restrict false claims and advertising. And that's a world I'm very familiar with coming from pharmaceuticals being regulated by the FDA. We're not looking to do that. We're just looking to be able to reach out there and give people information to help them around that. So it's not easy in that aspect for them to put kind of some roadblocks and some barriers up that we have to constantly jump over. Right. Um, you know, and it's, it's also that, so that's probably what I would say is probably the biggest barrier other than until, and this is going to sound odd, right? Until marijuana is federally legalized right now, it's hard to get any type of funding and financing. So we finance this business ourselves, you know, which wow. is not easy as an entrepreneur. So um, things like that, it'll all get better over time. And it wasn't a reason for myself and my partner, Scott, to ever say, we're going to wait until it gets better. And then we're going to jump into the pool. No, we're going to do this now. Why? Because people have a need. There is not a concept that we see in the local market that will meet the demand of the consumer. And we certainly haven't seen the level of, of customer service that we want to deliver as a business. So you know what? All those things are kind of checks against us, but we're going to push through them somehow. And when that all does get cleared up, when we do have access to capital one day, when advertising is just like you can advertise Tide laundry detergent, it'll be CBD, we'll be in a much better position for that. Um, so that's what we believe. That was great. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is pretty tough to be limited based on just that lack of, lack of you know, when it comes to Facebook or, or any of the social media, it's just, yeah. it's an algorithm. They're not even looking at it. And so that's unfortunate that you can't get to the people who, would potentially greatly benefit from the product that you're putting out there. Um, so uh, what, what do you do as a hobby that keeps you active or helps yeah. you stay well? Well, I mentioned my, my, my wife, Katie, and my three, uh, my three beautiful kids. So chasing after them is probably my biggest hobby in life. Um, I gave up golf a long time ago because I couldn't steal five hours away from the family. Um, one day, it'll come back in my life. But, you know, so really watching them play soccer, they all play soccer in the fall and the spring, um, is one of the biggest joys of my life as a parent. I just love watching my kids play sports. Um, and then, you know what, spending time with them at the pool, or, you know, just in the backyard, my little one today finally took the training wheels off her bike and I immediately videoed it and sent it to my wife and, you know, just warmed her heart. But other than that, I mean, I got my start 30 years ago as a restaurant guy. I went to school for culinary arts and restaurant management and I love to cook and unfortunately I love to eat. Very That's cool. a problem. <laughs> um, I love to cook, I love to eat. So if you were to come into my house or if you were to come over to my house, I'm probably going to cook for you. We're probably going to share a glass of wine, um, you know, and that's kind of my passions behind that. But that's what I just love to do. It's just family first. Um, yeah. It's, it's in a way. That's great. I love that we have these little handheld handheld cameras with us that we can film every little yeah. moment. I mean, you're yeah. you're filming uh, you're filming your your kid taking the training wheels off. I'm filming my daughter roll over yeah. for the first time. So it's, it's yeah, no doubt. It's pretty exciting. What's your uh, what's your favorite dish to prepare? Ooh, all right, my favorite dish. Okay, this is gonna sound weird if you're listening to this, right? But my favorite dish is uh, probably like wood fired pizza. Okay, so we honeymooned in Italy um, over what? Well, God, twenty years ago, I'm married twenty years now. So we honeymooned in Italy, and all I knew up until that point was American pizza, and no knocks on American pizza because I love all kinds of pizza, right? But when you went over to Italy and you found this amazing like just fresh tomato sauce, light, airy crust, right? It's, it's kind of acidic a little bit because the sauce isn't cooked and it's got fresh basil and fresh tomato sauce and fresh mozzarella. I've been in love for it for 20 years. So I've kind of devised this system at home where I've got a grill out back and I use a, a stone and a steel. Mm -hmm. By the way, happy to talk to anybody about how to do this. I love, I'm passionate about it. Um, <laughs> in the backyard to make what's the closest thing you can make to a wood-fired pizza without investing $5,000 into a wood-fired uh, oven in your backyard. Right. But it, and, it, and it probably is for one reason. It's simplicity done right. It's mm -hmm. a dough, sauce, and cheese, and fresh herbs, and that's it. It's not overly complicated. It's not processed. It's not anything. It's simplicity done right. 
Um, and uh, listen, all pizza is good pizza. Don't get me wrong, but some are definitely better than others, right? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Do you make the dough and the sauce yourself? I do. Yeah, I do like a seventy a seventy two hour fermentation and cold fermentation, and I've played with that over the years. But wow. yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's dedication. Science. That's for that's for the the dough, right? The, the dough. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yep. that's impressive. That's that is commitment. I'm struggling to p punch the dough a couple times a day when it's 72 hours fermentation. That's yeah. impressive. We can talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it sounds like cooking is a passion. Uh, what are two other passions besides family and business that you have? Uh, exercise for sure. Um, I'm missing the gym right now. Um, I, I hate it. Um, I just like going out. I like the social aspect of it. Um, I do like, um, total body, meaning I like to do some resistance training. Um, I love to run. I love to bike. Um, I love the spin class when it was, when we could go to the gym. So definitely exercise is one of them. Um, and then I would say probably anything outdoors, whether it was, you know, just going for a walk with the family on the greenways. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I love about Raleigh is the greenways we have here. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Outdoor, yeah. outdoor and exercise. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. All right. We're going to get into a couple fun ones then. Um, okay. What are three, I guess this isn't as fun, but what are three books that you generally recommend or like to gift to people? Uh, Team of Teams by General Stanley McChrystal. Um, if you're, uh, if you're, if you want to kind of read about a different perspective of one of the best generals we've had um, in this country and really talks deeply about leading diverse teams. Um, diversity inclusion was something that was really, I'm really passionate about um, building diverse teams, building inclusive teams. And he did it in a, in a community that was, usually um very much siloed especially in the special forces community so he just just a great book on leadership and a great a great book on leading like i said diverse teams um one of the best questions i've he he had in that book that i've always taken with me is that when you're in a situation that's really not working out and you know the people on the ground um have already figured it out but they just don't want to tell you what it is basically because you, you'll go up to people and ask them questions like hey listen like you know what should we do differently um, you know, to get things done, like he was talking about Afghanistan, what would you do differently in Afghanistan over the next 12 months? And everyone would give him a pat answer like, well, ah, I think everything's working fine. It's good and whatnot. To ask, it a, ask a question in a different way and say, what would you do differently if you had to stay here for the next 10 years? <laughs> and people stop and say, oh, if that's good, your question, then you know what? I'm going to give you a completely different answer because I'm not staying here for 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a big shout out to anybody who served our country because my hat is off to you. Um, come to church. We have a pave the way discount of up to 25%. That's one book there. Um, anybody I've ever talked to that um, is um, building a business, um, as you can kind of hear today, the Nordstrom way in terms of um, customer service. Everyone's heard of the Nordstrom, um, the Nordstrom experience where you can return a set of snow tires to them and don't even question it and they'll, and they'll take it back. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. extreme examples of customer service. Everybody thinks that they have strong customer service, but do you really put your actions behind your words? So the Nordstrom way is another big one. Um, seven habits, seven habits of highly successful people. Um, it definitely formed my career early on. Um, and if I can add a fourth one, just to kind of throw a fourth one out there. Um, yeah, man, right there. Seven habits, right? Uh, but, uh, Daniel Goleman did a lot of work on emotional intelligence, EQ. So I'm a big fan of EQ and, you know, not just leading with the IQ, um, quotient of it. And over the years, I've been fortunate to hire some great people and work with some great people that not only taught me a lot about EQ, but made me a better person uh, along the way. So probably those that would give to people in, in, in um, around those lines, there's a lot more. Um, but those are the ones yeah. I think highly of. That's awesome. Thank you. Those are great. I'll have to look into them. All right. What is your favorite ice cream? Ooh. Um, again, a simplicity you, guy. You have CBD okay. ice cream. No, I'm not CBD ice cream. No, I'm not. Um, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a balanced guy, right? So, like, so probably chocolate chip or strawberry. All right. Um, cool. Not too much loaded in it for me. I like it simple. Sure. Awesome. If you could be any animal, what would you be? You know what? I think I'd like to be a dog. Um, I have a, I have a five-year-old English golden retriever 
And I know I can take a lesson from her because she is always happy. She grew yeah. up. She grew up with my seven-year-old, and even when my seven-year-old would use her as a step stool and step on her head to get on the couch, she would just look at her with affection. Um, and her sole existence in life is to make my family happy, and we are very blessed to have her in our life. But I'd like to be a dog because they don't suffer from insomnia, um, and every day is a new day for them, and they're just happy all the time. So yeah. there's lessons there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good old Dale Carnegie said, you know, if you want to learn how to get people to like you, just look at dogs. <laughs> they got it right, man. They just come at you with extreme enthusiasm, no matter, no matter what, you know, we, we wash our dog's ears and clip their nails and, you know, within five minutes, they're coming right back at you with love. Yeah. They are. So yep. absolutely. All right. And then uh, one last question. If you had a billboard on a very busy highway, what would be the message that you put on it for people? I think it's, um, I think it would be something, this is a really good question, actually. Um, it's something probably like around the platinum rule, right? Like it's like treat others how you would like to be treated basically. Um, because you don't always know how they would like to be treated, right? You can't always know that, right? But if you know how you'd like to be treated, you know, treat others the same way, right? Around that. And I think, there's a message for that in there. And the kind of the reason why I'm thinking about that right now is a lot of time I spend with my kids is that, um, you know, we're in, a, we're in an interesting time in, in, in existence right now where I think we've lost a little bit of that be kind to others, essentially, meaning that, you know, what I told you before, I love inclusion and diversity and inclusion and diversity doesn't mean that we all have to think the same way. As a matter of fact, the diversity side of things would tell us that because of our experiences and our past and whether it's ethnicity or experience or demographics that we're all going to have different opinions. Um, and that's, what's going to make us better as a community and as a team. But that said, it's okay to disagree with somebody and it's okay to disagree with somebody passionately. Um, I've been on teams where I've argued with somebody passionately. I have two brothers where if you want to put a more sharper point on it, my older brother is more of a, uh, is more on the liberal side and myself and my younger brother are more conservative. We fight like cats and dogs sometimes, but we all have a beer afterwards. So it's okay to say, you know what? I might not be where you're at right now, but let's all just be kind to each other and let's all just get along. So that's why, if you want to know, that's why I'm thinking about that billboard more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. In, in line with that, I think it's so important to, not assume you know what someone is thinking or going to say and also to listen to what they're going to say and also be curious you know don't think that you, i mean you, you say how you would like to be treated but sometimes it's not no it you can't assume that you know what somebody else wants or yeah. somebody else thinks or um and you have to ask questions. I mean, that's that's what's so great about your business is that you have someone come in and the first thing you say to them is, why are you here? What do you need help with? So to, to ask questions, to have the conversations, to listen, and to be, as you said, just be kind. Look at it from a kindness standpoint and not like a, a battle, as you said. So uh, thank you. That's that's really, that'll be, that'll be a really great billboard one day. Hopefully we can save the money for it. Well said. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if there's, you had already mentioned the website, the contact list, uh, the contact yeah. button, if there's any other way or that people want to get a hold of you, whether it's about business, whether it's about yeah. you, whether it's about uh, networking, whatever, uh, how is the best way to contact you? Yeah, and I'm sure we can put this up right when we post the podcast, but I mean, but at the same time, yeah, go to www.trekcbd.com. That's T-R-E-K-C-B-D.com. Come to 1968 South Main Street if you're in the Raleigh area in Wake Forest. We'd love to see you. Um, or call us, 919-761-5020. That's 919-761-5020. We take the education piece really seriously. Um, like I said, anything about the podcast, hey, you want to talk about pizza, you want to talk about CBD, <laughs> you want to talk about anything, you know, we're here to build a community and we're here to help. So um, I, I, I just, as you, as you mentioned before, Bill, and it's such a good point, I love curiosity. I'm curious. So if you talk to us, I'm probably going to ask you a bunch of questions because I want you to be curious about me. And I, before we started this podcast, 
I meant it when I told Bill that there's no question that's out of bounds. I mean, I'm an open book. We're very authentic, myself and Scott. So, you know, get call us up, get to know us, whatever, but we just want to help. That's it. So it's that simple. Awesome. Well, all the information, yeah, will be in the show notes. So if anybody uh, wants to contact you, they'll have a link to click. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your openness and, and, and helping me understand a little bit better and helping the listeners understand a little bit better. Uh, I hope they all got something out of this. Uh, again, thank you so much for taking the, the time out of your busy life and the time away from your family to, to have a conversation with me. My, same, same. I really appreciate you and what you're doing out there as well. So just thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope you all enjoyed the conversation. And for now, be well and thrive.